Hi, my name is Jason Thorbeck, and today I'll be showing you how we build a Thorbeck Brothers S10 upper control arm. First, we get our saw set up where we can cut our tubing. Do that. two of our control arm tubes. We'll need two more to make a complete set. Now we already have our stop set up so we can make repeated cuts over and over without having to take the time to measure each one. Now that we've got our tubing cut, it's time to remove this brown finish that's put on there at the factory. And the way we do that is we use our dedicated lathe and a tubing sander to remove this material. See what a really nice job that does by removing that brown scale. Now we'll just do the other side. And then we have a nice polished tube, which makes it great for TIG welding. Now that we have our tubing cut and polished, it's time to bend it. And what we have here is a CNC tubing bender, which will hold about 10,000 different bending programs. And we have a stop set up on the die so that we just slide the piece in and it goes right where it needs to. We've got this spinning counter die, so when the piece is bending, this counter die will actually rotate along with the piece instead of uh, having a fixed counter die to where the tubing will actually drag across it, possibly scarring it up. And there we have one side of the uh, S10 upper control arm tube, already bent and formed. Go ahead and do the other side since we have it set up. We have a perfect bend every time. Now that our tubing is bent, it's time to trim it off the size. And the way we do that is we have a jig that bolts into the vise on the saw that holds the tubing in place while it comes down and just trims it off. And you can see as it's trimmed off compared to the other piece. Now that we have our tubing cut off the size, it's time to cap this hole. And the reason we cap that hole so that you get a nice weld completely around the ball joint tube. You wouldn't want that hole interfering, allowing dirt and road grime 
even water to get inside. The way we do that is we have these laser cut plugs that just tap down inside the hole. Then we recess them about a sixteenth of an inch, maybe a little more, maybe around three thirty seconds. And now it's time to uh, to plug weld that. You can see how hot that gets. What we do is we fill in that 16th to 332nd gap by pulse welding that plug. And the reason we pulse weld it is because it burns a lot hotter than regular MIG. Now after we get these welded up and they've cooled down, we'll go back and we'll grind those smooth. That's why we leave the weld sticking up just a little bit past the edge of the tube. Now that our tubes have cooled off, it's time to grind off this weld flush with the tube. Now after we've ground the weld flush, it's time to put a rounded chamfer along the outside edge of the tube. Now the reason we put a chamfer around the outside edge of the tube, so when the ball joint plate meets up to it, and we wrap that weld around all three sides, the heat won't cut into a sharp cornered edge of the tube. Now that we have our edge chamfered and ground smooth, it's time to coat the end for the control arm bushing. And the way we do that is we have this jig fixture that hooks up to one of our mills, locks into place, and then this hole saw just comes down and cuts the tube. What's nice about this jig fixture is it has all these different arms that can move in numerous positions. So whatever angle that we need to cut, it's not a problem. Now that we have our tubing coped for the end bushing, we need to go in and get rid of this really sharp edge by putting a really deep bevel on it. The reason we do that is when you weld that bushing in on this piece of tube, you don't want to melt away this really thin edge. You actually want to be able to, to penetrate the steel and uh, put a nice heavy bead around there.